Hello and welcome to this week's episode of our Facts First podcast. I'm your host, Christian Esguera. Now, this week's episode is still part of the special series of the Bang Samoro on the Bang Samoro, uh, which we are doing in partnership with the Institute for Autonomy and Governance. Now, for this week, we're going to talk about a very important aspect uh, in the uh, Bang Samoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, which of course is still undergoing a very crucial transition uh, following the uh, signing of the peace agreement, and of course. Uh, the uh, the establishment of a new region in the Bangsamoro. So we're going to talk about political parties and uh, political party institution building and why that is important. So for this week's episode, we have three important guests. I, I would like to introduce them to you one by one. First, uh, we have uh, Ms. Noraida Akad. She's the head of the Education and Information Committee of the Alliance of Democrats Party or Allied. Now we have uh, Mr. Or Dr. Musa Damao. He is one of the lead conveners of the Medina Party, a political party organized by the core leaders of a civil society organization called Mindanao Development Initiatives Assembly. Uh, he serves as the uh, secretary of that political party. And third, we have Mr. Timuay Rene Batitao. He's one of the conveners of the political party being organized by the non-Islamized indigenous peoples in the Bangsamoro region as head of the Political Affairs Committee of the Umbrella Organization of the Tidurai and Lambagian Ethnic Group, known as the Organization of the Tidurai and Lambangian Conference, or OTLAC. Thank you for joining us, sir, on this podcast. Okay. So for today, let's start off with, the, with a very basic question. Why it's important uh, to have strong political parties? Uh, why it's important to have the political parties as an institution? in this very crucial transition in the Bangsamoro. Uh, I'd like to start uh, with uh, Ms. Uh, Noraida Akad. Explain to us basically, uh, to our listeners, why it's important to have strong political parties in the Bangsamoro. Hey, uh, good afternoon to everyone. For me, no, it is important because um, organizing a political party, it is a means that we have to empower those communities to nasa underground para marinig natin yung kanila mga bosses, no? Kasi, we as na nandun sa power, na yung may kakayahan to organize, so kailangan natin marinig, no? Yung kanilang mga hinaing, yun yung dadalhin natin doon sa uh, sa parliament, inshallah. So, usually, pagka meron po tayong ganitong uh, uh, mga mga pagkakataon, ginagrab po natin yung opportunity na uh, we are not thinking as political party na tayo lang yung iisip natin, but yun yung mga tao na nasa behind natin, no? dinadala natin kayo lang yung hinain nila. No? Mm-hmm. Kasi nga, yun yung mas focus natin. Basically, uh, Noraida, anong roots itong, ano, itong uh, allied party? Saan siya nagsimula at gano'ng katagal na siya? Yes, itong uh, political uh, party na meron tayo itong, itong allied, no? Um, it is a composed of uh, farmers' organizations na nasa ground. No? Yun yung, uh, uh, sila yung mga members, no? sila yung mga tao natin sa ground na mas tinitignan natin na mas kailangan nila na marinig yung bosses nila. Since itong uh, alay no, ay nagsimula ito, uh, uh, kung hindi ako nagkakamali, ay uh, three years before mula ngayon, na three years na siya. So, gano'ng gano kalaki yung, ano, yung political party na ito? As, uh, meron mo tayong Central Minda, no? and then meron mo din tayo sa Menlan. No? Kasi medyo malawa po yung coverage natin kasi nagsimula po tayo sa, uh, actually nagsimula tayo sa projects na mula noon ay i-grab natin yung opportunity na mas marinig natin yung boses na nasa girl and unti-unti na buo si Allied. Okay. Now let's go to uh, Dr. Busa Damao. Uh, he's one of the lead conveners of the Medina Party. So another political party. Give us an idea of how this uh, political party was established. And basically, uh, what is the goal? What is the platform of this party? Uh, actually talking about political party, uh, it is very important given that uh, we are now in the parliamentary system. Uh, that is uh, the parliamentary system in the Bangsamoro government. Uh, Political party is very important uh, because this will serve as a vehicle 
uh, in order that the sentiments of the uh, community will be heard by the government. Uh, this political party will carry out or carry the sentiments and the aspirations of the uh, marginalized people in the society. So by joining or by participating in the political party, they have this opportunity to, to say to the government what is really happening in their community and what they want to realize. So for you to be, to, to be able to be represented properly in the parliament of the Bangsamoro, you need to establish an honest to goodness and a strong political party. That's part of the reason, right? Yeah, that's right. You, you say you know, nature of the political party. Uh, actually, uh, our political party. Uh, actually, this is a uh, non-government organization before, but uh, we step up in order to make this as political party. Because we we render services to the people and, uh, of course, in the community. So we want to step up our services uh, by joining in the podium of the parliamentary uh, government. And so far, how big is the political party? Uh, we are, our uh, civil society or non-government organization is not that uh, uh, big, but uh, we are trying to make our political party. Uh, what I'm trying to say, uh, Sir Christian, is that galing kami sa, ano, eh, galing kami sa uh, NGO, but we, we are going to make this NGO into a political party. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, this is just an emerging political party, not yet well established in the, in the community. Pero hindi pa siya uh, formally established na ba siya as a political party or not yet? In the process pa? In the process because, uh, of course, we are waiting for the uh, electoral, code. electoral code to be coded or to be legislated in order to know what really the qualifications or what really uh, the uh, what they really want to uh, uh, what the requirements for example of the political party to be to exist mm. okay and okay mr uh, batitao uh, talk to us about the political party of yours and basically um, why it's important for for your group to be represented in the bangsamoro parliament well uh, <clears throat> the indigenous people of the Bangsamuro, uh, organize, organize political pri uh, party prior to the enactment of Republic Act 11054. Uh, sapagat po ay uh, naisip nila na to exercise their uh, political ambition ay uh, doon lamang uh, mangyayari sa pagkakaroon ng uh, political party na bilang uh, vehicle nila sa uh, political uh, in the exercise of political or in the political arena. Mm -hmm. And then, gano'ng kalaki po yung uh, political party niya? Well, uh, na-organize namin ang aming political party in Maginanao pa lamang po hindi pa nag-abot sa mga island provinces kaya nasa uh, stage of processing pa yung mga document, registration with the COMELEC, ganyan. Oo nga eh. Tsaka basically ang problem dito wala, pa tayo, wala pang electoral code for the Bangsa oh, Moro Autonomous Region and Muslim Mindanao. Siguro mm -hmm. I'd like to get this out of the way because I'm sure while you are doing all those things or those requirements uh, for the establishment of a political party, there's still this uh, uncertainty hanging over your heads. Ba? Number yeah. one, there's this strong push to uh, postpone or even cancel the uh, first ever elections in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao yeah. in 2022 because uh -huh. the proposal is to extend the Bangsamoro Transition Authority from 2022 until 2025. Ano po yung tingin niyo dun sa proposal na yan? Are you in favor of that? Uh, anybody can answer. Who would like to go first? Well, uh, it will rely on the uh, Congress, kung pwede ba nila i-extend yan o hindi. Mahirap na magsalita po sa ano man yan, pero kung ano mang decision ng Congress to extend the term of office, 
of the BTA, then doon lang kami sa support po. De, pero ano yung preference nyo? Being those, kayo yung nandyan, di ba? So, mm-hmm. Kongreso, nasa batasan. You have representatives uh-huh. from the Bangsamor uh-huh. also. Pero uh-huh. being the, the, uh, the person who is actually there on the ground, what would you prefer? Well, hati-hati po. May gusto nga uh, ma-extend yung uh, BTA. May gusto nga... Uh, pero kung sa akin na, okay lang ako sa extension ng BTA. Mm-hmm. BTA extension. Kasi medyo naantala yung... Uh, uh activities dahil dito sa COVID-19. Okay. Uh, Ms. Akad, uh, what's your preference? Are you in favor of uh, extending the BTA? Yes, in myself, uh, absolutely yes. No, kasi nga, hindi pa natin masyado uh, nakikita, parang hindi pa kasi hino, kaya hindi natin pwedeng uh, i-judge agad kung anong natapos ng bangsa moro ngayon dahil na uh, three years pa lang naman. Magka three years pa lang naman. So, I'm favor actually doon sa extension para mas makita pa natin kung ano pa yung kanilang mabibigay doon sa community or mga services na para doon sa bangsa ng Europe. Pero that would also mean that uh, your participation in the first ever elections in the Bangsamoro would have to wait, di ba? For yes. another three years. Okay lang sa inyo yan. Yes, kasi uh, uh, nandun, nandun pa naman din tayo sa strengthening ng ating, ng ating organization. So probably on that time, we, uh, the party is ready para sumabak doon sa election. Hmm. How about uh, Dr. Musa? Uh, actually, it would be logical to uh, extend because uh, uh, the government and the MILF, uh, they have uh, their respective uh, their variables. So, merong, merong dapat na ibibigay yung MILF, for example, at saka meron din yung government. Hmm. So, meron mga their variables na hindi pa naibigay. So, that's why it, it would be logical to extend this in order to realize those things. Uh, and being an emerging uh, political party, of course, uh, hindi pa tayo medyo handa sa, ano, sa 2022. So, uh, we can wait. We can wait until 2025. Eh, so, okay na kayo sa three-year extension. Kasi originally naman, during the early stages of the uh, peace talks, the original proposal was a six-year transition, di ba? But yes. we know what happened along the way. So, and, and, nahate. Mm-hmm. Naging 50%, di ba? Naging 3 years na lang yung transition. So okay ka sa 3 year additional. Uh, yeah, Ms. Akad, you were saying something? Yes, yes sir. Uh, definitely yes. Kasi nga yung sabi ko kanina, na kumbaga, yung 3 years, masyadong maikse. No? So, yun nga sabi mo nga din po kanina, na 6 years yung original, but then at the end of the day, nagawa siyang 3 na lang. So, Pagbigyan sana natin ang Bangsamoro na ma-extend pa para mas ma- yun nga, para mas mapakita pa niya yung uh, yung kanyang uh, karahas kumbaga. I'd like to take this opportunity this podcast to also explain to the, our listeners to our viewers as well uh, the the importance of political party building in the Bangsamoro kasi usually if you talk about the political party system in the Philippines Definitely, there are a lot of problems, di ba? Masyadong personality-based uh, yung, yung election and campaign dito sa Pilipinas. And we know that the same problem is also encountered in other parts of the Philippines, including the Bangsamoro, despite the uh, structural reforms that have been put in place under the uh, Bangsamoro Organic Law. So my question is, for instance, do you think at this stage, uh, you're, you're getting a lot of improvement somehow as far as educating the people, informing them, on why it's important to to have strong political parties in the context of the elections uh, for the par- for parliamentary seats. Anybody? Kung baga napapansin nyo ba na mas naiintindihan na ng mga nasa Bangsamoro kung bakit kailangan matatag ang political parties in the region? Uh, uh, actually, based on my observation, parang hindi pa ganun kalalim yung kaalaman ng Bangsamoro regarding uh, parliamentary system. Kasi they were accustomed to uh, this unitary setup like the regional uh, government uh, during autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. So given that we don't have yet uh, exercised this kind of parliamentary election, 
So talagang uh, hindi mo na natin malalaman kung ano yung itsura. So even the even the uh, politicians themselves uh, I I suspect that uh, they are not yet familiar with that uh, political system. Ano ba yung nakikita yung para most common misconception about the parliamentary system and that which you need to actually clarify to the people. Uh, kagaya ng sinasabi ko sir kanina uh, kasi wala pa silang alam eh. wala pa silang alam na political uh, party existing this time maliban doon sa uh, United Bangsamoro Justice Party so given na uh, wala pa silang mga kaalaman sa ibang ano uh, political party so yun yun nga yun, yun yung sinasabi ko na talagang hindi pa ganun kalalim yung kanilang kaalaman Do you agree, eh, Mr. Batito? Yes, uh, parliamentary, parliamentary system is very new to us in, the, in this uh, part of the Philippines. No? So, kailangan pa natin ng uh, more knowledge on this kind of uh, uh, system of government. Like what? Ano yung mga mas kailangan ipaliwanag sa kanila? For instance, ba, I think... Yes, you also encountered this question, ba? Parang, din ba sa susunod na election sa Bangsamoro, can we still vote directly for the uh, chief minister? Kasi dati, ganun ang ginagawa na nila, di ba? Yung armed governor, they, they, they used to vote for the governor directly. Pero under the parliamentary system, na, 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 nadidinig nyo pa rin ba yung mga misconceptions? Uh, well, uh, in the case of the... Uh, Chief Minister in the Bangsamuro, it will be voted by the members of the parliament. Uh, so, kinikailangan po yung uh, uh, kung isang uh, member of the parliament na gustong mag- magiging chief minister, kailangan ma- ma-hold niya majority of the party in the Bangsamuro. Pagkat yung ma-hold niya yung mga majority of the Uh, political party, uh, may possibility na siya talagang magiging uh, chief, uh, uh, chief minister. So, kailangan niyang mag-reach out sa other political parties? Yes. Oh. Kailangan. Magkukuha niya yung uh, uh, majority of the party in the Bagsamuro. Oh. Kay Noraida, ano pa ano yung mga nakikita mo? Ano? Based on the experience of your party, what other challenges uh, are you seeing in terms of this uh, very crucial process of political party building? Doon pa rin po yung uh, dilemma ng mga tao na kapag ka, uh, ay, ba, hindi napili ng maayos. Kasi nandun pa rin yung mga political person before. Yung mga uh, like, alam nila. So nandyan pa rin sila. They are forming also a political party. So kailangan na uh, nakikita pa rin nila na may, ma- may isa No, may mga taong kailangan magbuo ng political party na mas mas uh, tutugon doon sa needs nila dahil kung doon lang man din parang naninira na ako no? parang doon kung doon lang man din po no so parang wala din masyadong changes so nakikita nila ngayon na uh, kailangan talaga nilang uh, ma-empower sa ground kasi yung iba nga sab- tama nga yung sabi ni Sir kanina na Uh, wala pa talaga silang kilala ang ibang party kasi ang UBJP pa lang ang malawakang na uh, naririnig nila. So, sa chance, sa, ch- sa chance na yun na parang basic industry na sana ay ma-extend yung, uh, yung uh, bar, no? is sana nga is uh, ma-strengthen natin, mas ma-educate natin yung mga tao sa gawin para mas matatak sa kanila kung gaano ka-importante iting <coughs> political party sa panyang. Actually, you mentioned something very important there, di ba? So actually, hindi ka naman naninira. Papunta doon yung discussion natin eh. Kasi we also have to talk about the realities in the regional politics. Alam naman natin yung mga political clans, political yeah. warlords, yung personality-based <laughs> politics. Lahat siya na mapapag-usapan because hindi siya na eh, hindi siya exclusive sa Bangsamoro. Di ba? Nangyayari din yan in other parts of the Philippines. And we cannot ignore that, no? So dito in this case, for instance, do you have any idea of how many emerging political parties there are in the Bangsamoro now? I say emerging kasi technically hindi pa naman talaga established yan dahil nga inihintay niyo electoral code, di ba? Pero would you know how many? Give us an idea. 
Actually ako ang, uh, ang naririnig ko lang daw kasi nga hindi pa nga sila din lumilitaw. So I think tatlo, no? Tatlo. Um, Magindanao, alam mo na yan ba sila sa Magindanao and then Norco Tabato, ayan. Mm. So yun lang yung in my own ha, as, as an observation saka naririnig lang din natin sa mga tao. Bukod pa rin sa partido niyong tatlo na yeah. nandito sa... Yeah. Okay. Tsaka yung sa United Dabang Samora Justice Party, which is the uh, dominant party as we speak because that is a party of the Moro Islamic Liberation Fund. I'd like to go to another crucial question. How do you prevent the uh, political party system in the Bang Samoro uh, from being hijacked by traditional politicians, by political clans? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Who would like to answer? Uh, actually, in the in the Bangsamoro, in the political system that we have in the Bangsamoro, uh, the beauty of this political system is that because there are three three kinds of uh, members of parliament. The yung first three, one, three seats, de ba? Yeah, three. Uh, uh, <laughs> The the fifty percent of these uh, parliamentary members or parli- members of the parliament, ay manggagaling doon sa political party, and then meron ding tinatawag na district representation, and that would be uh, plurality of votes. Forty uh, percent. Yeah, forty uh, percent, and meron meron tinatawag na reserve seats. So ang guilty doon is that yung mga minority minority halimbawa settler community and the uh, IP. They have already their uh, representatives in the in the parliament, kahit na walas walang election. So uh, that's why uh, parang nakikita ko yung parang meron din namang liwanag na ano sa political system na meron tayo ngayon. Not not, 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 ano, not to sound cynical, pero ganyan din naman yung nangyari when the uh, party list law was enacted in 1995, uh, as spelled out in the 1987 constitution. But when it, it was first uh, exercised, di ba, nationally, ngayon, pag tinignan natin yung political party system in the Philippines, in particular, the party system has been hijacked by, by traditional politicians, di ba? So, di, are you seeing enough safeguards in the uh, Bangsamoro organic law to prevent this from happening in your in your region somehow? I think, I, I think, uh, kagaya ng sinasabi ko, sir, uh, kasi... Ang kaibahan kasi ng ano, ang kaibahan ng party uh, party list system na sinasabi mo is that uh, meron ding nangyayaring election in that uh, particular uh, ano. Dito sa reserve seat, I think, I think uh, I'm not a lawyer. I think uh, talagang uh, manggagaling talaga doon sa ano, doon sa uh, sa minority groups na sinasabi. Hindi ka tulad doon sa ano, last 2011 when we were in Congress, meron doon representative ng uh, tricycle driver which is yeah. uh, who is very influential political uh, clan. Doon siya nang galing. So, Huwag na natin pangalanan, uh, although kilala, kilala ko yan, naalala ko yan. <laughs> yung, political part, yung political clan na yan. Yeah, yeah. So yun, yun yung sinasabi ko. Uh, so meron natin, reserve seats. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sige, para mas maintindihan ng, ano, ng listeners and viewers natin. So you have an 80-member Bangsamoro Parliament. Now, kalahati noon, 50%, basically 40 seats. Yeah. Paglalabanan ng mga political parties, yung system of proportional representation. Yeah. For example, kunwari, ang partido nyo, ang isa sa inyo, let's say, napanalunan nyo 100% of all the votes cast for that particular proportional representation. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng 49 sa inyo. Tama? Yeah. That is a true spirit of proportional representation. And then 40%, of the remaining 50%, ay, 40% ng, ano, ng 80 seats, paglalabanan ng mga single member uh, district. Yung parang pa, paano tayo mag-elect ng district congressman ngayon, di ba? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then 10% reserve seats. So again, uh, the others, do you see enough safeguards dito sa, sa ganitong sistema to be able to prevent uh, the likelihood or the possibility of uh, yung mga trapos hijacking the system once again? Uh May the other, so oh, sige, sige. go go. Well, uh, siguro sir, hindi pa rin ma-prevent kung halimbawa doon sa uh, 
district representation. Sapagkat may exercise din nila yung uh, uh, yung uh, traditional uh, system of selecting the representative of to the parliament. Pagkat uh, may beliwik yan sila eh. May sarili silang uh, beliwik yan eh. So, hindi ma-prevent. Pero ano? Ano yung gusto? Sige, sir. Go, go. Maliban lamang kung uh, doon sa uh, uh, ano, sa election law ng uh, Bagsamuro ay malinaw na walang uh, uh, hindi nila ma-exercise yung kanilang uh, uh, traditional system. Okay. What, what would you like to see specifically in the electoral code for the Bangsamoro? Total, kinakraft pa naman siya ngayon, di ba? Well, uh, mayroon siya ng provision sa electoral code na to prevent yung uh, mga ganong system. Pero ganun pa man po, kahit na sa election code ng uh, Pilipinas, ay eh, very clear naman na hindi talaga dapat gawin yung mga ganun. Pero tulad ng sinabi ng kasama natin dito, ay uh, nandyan pa rin yung uh, ganun uh, sistema nangyari sa mga uh, remote areas po. Norayda, I'd like to go to you. <laughs> Kanina parang medyo malalim yung hugot mo eh when you, were, when you were talking about this issue. Ikaw, personally, and also speaking for your emerging political party, what would you like to see in the electoral code to prevent this from happening? Actually, kung doon sa electoral code talaga, uh, meron mga safeguard ka sa mga nasabi ko kanina na kahit gaano yung gawin natin, pero ito ha, kung i-educate natin yung tao sa ground, kung sino yung dapat nilang iboto at sa, sino yung hindi dapat nilang iboto sa amin, is doon, doon pa lang, sa preparation pa lang, makikita na natin na mapiprevent, sana, ma, mapiprevent siya. Pero kung doon sa, sabi ko, busy in this guys, sana nga, um, kasi with the help of IGA, no, so, sa education, sa community, kung sino yung dapat iboto, kasi nga, Matagal na itong political na itong politics na ito na paulit-ulit pa rin na ang binoboto nila is yung uh, after ng iboto magko-complain sila. No? So pag binigyan lang sila ng konti, okay na. So mawawala naman yung kumting. So ngayon, sa education doon ko nakikita, no? Doon ko nakikita na mas ma-prevent natin ang ganitong klase ng issue kapag alam ng tao na kapag yan ang binoto mo, ito ang consequences. Hmm. So, bibigyan natin sila ng pros and cons. Pag, pag ito na part, hindi naman na uh, lantaran, no? hindi natin lantaran na sisiraan yung, uh, kung sino man yung ibang party this na, kumbaga, uh, political party na, ganun yung uh, gusto na sila pa rin yung mangingibabok. Na, uh, kumbaga, nag-change na nga tayo pero gusto pa rin nilang pumasok. So, tayo na matagal nang nag-struggle para lang makuha itong uh, barm na ito. Uh, ito yung kwan ko gusto namin i-kwan sa mga uh, ministers, no? Na, kumbaga, mas educate nila. Kasi kung kami na political uh, party, um, kasi medyo nagsismula siya at hindi ganun kalaki yung budget na meron or minsan nga walang budget. So, sana... No, sila yung unang-unang mag-educate doon sa mga tao. Ngayon pa lang, no, educate na nila sa ground para ma-prevent yung yan, yan sila. Very important yung... Oh, sige, sir. Go ahead. Uh, maliban doon sa sinasabi niya po na educate, ang isang magandang bagay siguro, yung uh, actors of the government should enforce the mandate of the law. Very clear sinasabi ng... Uh, batas na bawal ang boat buying. Pero hmm. kung makikita ninyo sa mga sa provinces, grabe, grabe, grabe talo. No, yung mga tao na alam na alam din nila yung bawal ang boat buying, both 
yung uh, electorate at saka yung uh, uh, politician, candidate. Alam na alam nila bawal, pero bakit ginagawa nila? So, I suggest na yung actors of the government, like the COMELEC and that of the law enforcers, implement sa na nila yung uh, true meaning and spirit of the law. Mm. Strict implementation of the law. Yes. Uh, Tama yan. Pero again, ha, I'd like to, I don't want to sound cynical here, pero it's very important to educate the voters on which particular parties uh, have a clear platform of government. Diba? Sabi nga kayo ni Noraida na hindi naman kailangan manira, pero you could remind them na if you go for this particular party, this is what you will get. Understandable naman yun. But how do you deal with money politics? For instance, you deal with uh, ordinary people, ordinary voters in the Bangsamoro. Sabihin nila, gustong-gusto namin yung plataforma nyo, naniniwala kami sa inyo. Pero itong isang partido, may binibigay sa amin, immediate yung impact. At pag hindi sila nanalo, hindi magtutuloy-tuloy yung beneficyo na kukuha namin. Kailangan siya ng pamilya namin. I mean, can you blame them? So how, how, how would you uh, deal with situations like that, for instance? And anyone who would like to answer that, because I think that's that is a very real problem here. We're seeing that elsewhere in the Philippines. Actually, uh, way back 2013, nagkaroon nga kami ng voters education na tinuturo doon sa mga, sa mga tao na kapag binenta mo yung uh, voto mo into a certain amount, i-divide mo into 12, 12 months, into 3 years. So magkano lang yung share mo doon? Samantala kapag ka, ang niluklok mo is yung tamang tao, hindi lang 5,000 ang makukuha mo kung hindi kung ano yung rights mo as individual ay may enjoy mo. Kasi nga, um, usually mga tao tam, uh, tamad na gusto agad ang dyan. So kapag ka, hindi nila makita, yung pag hindi mo explain ng maayos yung impact ng kanilang ginagawa hindi rin nila ma-realize so that's why maganda na mayroong mga NGOs na nagkakaroon ng mga voter education sa GRA para mas ma-educate ulito rin para ma-educate yung mga tao sa GRA kung ano yung dapat nilang gawin if i may uh, magkano ba ang uh, rate ng vote buying diyan during the previous election just to give us an idea it depends. Depende pa ako. Kasi narinig ko. Narinig ko ah. Kasi hmm. sa atin yung mga studyante namin before. Ah, na kumbaga. Dito ba na sa Danao? Medyo malakihan dyan. Like magkano? Uh, 10,000 din yun. Per family or per person? Per, per family. Sometimes per individual. So... Saan ka ba? Doon sa 10,000? Or pag hindi mo kinuha yun is baka bukas nakatihaya ka na. No? So usually ganun kasi yung nangyayari in reality. So kung kaya ganun kahalaga yung education sa ground na mas maintindihan nila. Pero hindi talaga sabi mo din kayo, hindi natin sila masisi na nandyan yung pera. No? Pero for me, education yung kailangan natin. Paintindihin ang tao sa ground yung halaga nung isang boto mo, benta mo lang from the left ng service, hindi mo makukuha. Okay, okay Dr. Damao, I'd like to ask about um, political party financing kasi this is also one uh, aspect that needs to be addressed, for instance. Um, supposedly level yung playing field, di ba? Kasi nga, system of pro- proportional representation. Pero... How, how will campaign financing, for example, go for, for political parties once the campaign actually starts? Lores, ano yung, mag, ano yung dapat pagkukunan ng pondo ng mga partido? Uh, actually, pag, yan yung pinakamalaking challenge sa, ano eh, sa, sa political party, yung tinatawag nilang resources. Mm-hmm. Financing. Kasi ang... Ang, yan kasi yung parang gasolina eh. yan yung parang oil para tumakbo yung isang political party at kung ano man alam. So halimbawa, uh, in in the case of Barm, we have uh, uh, five provinces. Kung wala kang pera, talagang talagang uh, hindi ka makakakuha ng boto sa ibang uh, provinces kasi uh, uh, the fact na pupunta ka doon, the fact na meron kang pupuntahan doon, uh, like kakausapin mo yung mga botante doon, hotel, what, etc. So talagang pera ang kailangan sa ano eh. So that's why, yan yung pinakamalaking uh, 
uh, challenge na kakaharapin ng isang political party. So, paano pa paano niyo uh, gagawa ng paraan yun? Kasi I, I suspect, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, one way of hijacking this uh this this system of pro- pro- proportional representation is uh, with certain let's say clans who would like to hijack the that that part yung 50% ng parliament di ba they could finance uh, political parties emerging political parties pwedeng hindi sila nakapronta but they're working behind the scenes pero pwedeng hawak nila sa liig ng ano yung political party niyan in case manalo tama ba Uh, actually, sa, sa amin, for example, if we if our political party will uh, <clears throat> will run for uh, uh, shall we say sa 2025, talagang uh, ang gagawin namin is uh, kailangan gagawa kami ng resource generation program or projects na at least hindi kami mahahawakan ng ano ng isang political clan halimbawa. Kung, kung wala na talagang choice, halimbawa, at uh, walang ibang opportunity, talagang uh, pwede naman yung pagiging ano eh, merong alliance sa isang political party. Alliance ang magiging uh, solusyon. Halimbawa, uh, in this alliance, kinakailangan meron kang uh, hihingin at meron silang ibibigay sa'yo. At ano naman yung ibibigay mo sa kanila. Yun yung nakikita kong ano, uh, political alliance. Pero dapat so, based on ano yan, based on issues and platform, hindi yung expediency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Uh, hindi yan mawawala. Uh, meron tayong uh, ideology, halimbawa, and meron tayong uh, platform, programs of government, talagang meron tayong red line na uh, kailangan dito lang tayo. Dito, dito tayo mag-compromise at ito ay red line, halimbawa. Yung mga non-negotiables, kumbaga. Non-negotiable, yeah. Okay. How about the others? What do you think? Yung, yung ganyan. I, I'm asking about the practical problems that uh, that that might emerge. no? Uh, how about the others? How do you prevent the the hijacking of the uh, political party system in the uh, the system of proportional representation? Kasi in the, in the first place, close list ba siya? So, dapat partido talaga ang kinakampanya, di ba? Hindi yung personalities behind the party. Tama ba yan? Yeah. Ayun. So in that case, how do you how do you make sure that indeed uh, political parties would be elected on the basis of the platform and advocacies of that political party? Uh, Noraida, would you like to reply? I mean, kasi uh, sabi ko kanina sa prior panayas sa sa alay is usually uh, karamihan sa amin is farmers. We are organ- actually the are organization under the ground na kin- uh, sinali no? sumali dito sa alam uh, so kumbaga from that point kumbaga maram uh, marami ng tao sa ground and that certain organization but within that mag- let's say maginda na no? maraming organization diyan so lahat noon no ay meron kami or nakasali sa organization. So, kung titignan mo doon sa sa financing, sabi nga, talaga ito yung pinaka-challenging kasi ito yung bakbo ng isang organization. Pagka wala kang pera, ay mahirap nga talagang tumakbo ang isang organization. So, kailangan nga din ng uh, kailangan resource for yung organization mo para uh, hindi ka nang hihingi, sabi mo nga doon, na hindi siya ma-hijack nitong mga political plan na ito na okay, dahil wala kayong pera, dito kayo sa amin. No. Kasi nga, kung sasama tayo sa kanila, mawawala yung essence kung bakit natin binuo itong political uh, party na meron tayo ito. So, yun nga, the term is alliance para mas ma- kung marami tayo, walang imposible. Okay. Uh, how about Mr. Batitao? Yun nga eh. So, kasi, kasi pwedeng hindi naman pumayag yung political party to be hijacked directly by a by a wealthy clan for instance by a traditional politician pero paano kung buhusan niya yung pera yung buhusan niya ng pera yung kalaban for instance diba? yung ibang mga kalaban niyo so that could also restrict the space or the possibility of victory for those that are for political parties with less resources uh, well yan pong pinaka-challenging. The only remedy is uh, magkikwalis po sa malaking uh, political party. 
kahit sa national uh, national setup upang uh, masira masira ng uh, regional party natin sa lakas ng kanilang party in terms of machinery na kung saan ay uh, hindi lamang po yung uh, sa pamagitan ng uh, uh, financial siguro kundi uh, sa ibang uh, pamaraan na upang uh, uh, may taguyod yung ating uh, regional party. So you mentioned your national parties. Anyone can answer. Pa- para ano lang to, for purposes of education, para mas ma-educate din yung mga nanonood, nanonood at saka nakikinig sa atin. Hmm. Yung national political party ba, pwede magtayo ng sarili ng regional party sa Bangsamoro para mag-participate sa BARM elections or pwede siyang sumuporta ng existing regional party. For example lang, PTB Lab, PDP Laban, let's say Liberal Party, NPC, NUP, pwede ba niyang gawin yun dito sa BARM? Anyone? Parang ano to, uh, educational purposes para sa ating mga tagapakinig. Well, uh, wala pa naman sigurong batas na uh, uh, mag-prevent sa, sa isang local party makikwalis sa national party. Pero yung national party magtayo ng sarili niyang regional party to join in the BARM elections. Allow John? Wala tayong uh, nakikitang batas na ganun po. Pero ang ibig ko lang sabihin ay pwede siguro yung local uh, party makikwali sa national party. Because I think this is important for, for, the, for the voters to understand. Na, kasi very exclusive ba yung election ng BARM? Technically, uh, dapat yung mga nasa bar na magde-decide kung ano yung dapat mangyari sa region, di ba? Because that is part of the spirit. Well, na, bakit nagkaroon well, ng peace agreement? Well, kung uh, uh, ma-spill out sa uh, ex- election code ng bar na hindi pwede, yun ang hindi mangyari po. Pero wala pa mga election code ng bar, baka pwede po. Okay. Okay, so final point, uh, I'd like to give this uh, uh, this opportunity for each of you uh, to to remind the voters. You can address them directly on the important things that they have to be reminded of, the things that they should always remember, uh, especially in terms of the importance of political party building sa Bangsamoro. Bakit importante na kailangan mag-work itong sistema na na-establish dito sa Bangsamoro? Uh, we can start with, uh, with Dr. Musa. Uh, Damao. Uh, this bar, le- let me start from here. Uh, BARM is a correction of the failed experiment that no less than uh, the last president, Benigno Aquino, said that this arm, Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, uh, is a failed experiment. So BARM is a correction to that failed experiment. So this is our opportunity uh, para maging develop ang ating region. So this political system that we have today uh, is a attempting alternative for us to correct all the mistakes that we had in the past. So kinakailangan, kinakailangan natin na baguhin yung sistema. Even in, in voting, in election, in economic uh, uh, agenda in education in politics kailangan tayong magbago and this is now the, the magkikita natin dito sa farm and then dito sa political system that we have na talagang meron tayong patutunguhan and uh, we we fought the Moro people has been fighting for quite a long time in order to realize this uh, right to self determination and this right to self-determination can be exercised uh, through this uh, uh, bar, the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. So ito na yung panahon. Ito na yung last chance natin para maging develop that, that we can run at par with the rest of the region in the Philippines and even in the rest of the world. So kinakailangan natin uh, baguhin yung sistema natin. Kinakailangan natin uh, gawin kung ano yung tama at uh, ang sistema yun at ang tama na yun na sinasabi ko is now in our face. Thank yes. you. Mr. Batitaw. Well, ito may yung sinasabi niya po na uh, 
itong uh, barn ay uh, to correct yung uh, uh, pagkakamali, previously pagkakamali. Tulad ng uh, uh, dealing with the past uh, uh, experience na talagang dapat yun ay uh, makorek. So, uh, Umasa tayo sa during itong uh, barn, lalong-lalo ng pag-establish nila ng transitional justice uh, uh, reconciliation dealing with the past experience. Na makorek yung uh, lahat ng uh, hindi magandang nangyari sa mga tao dito sa uh, Bangsa Moro area. And the Raida? Yes. Um, doon sa mga tao sa community. Yun is yung uh, self-determination by exercise natin through this political party. So, uh, titignan natin, evaluate natin, tingnan natin kung sino, ano, yung sino yung mga political party na pwede magdala ng issue ninyo. No? Uh, so, kailangan lang na maging matyag, matyag, uh, mat, mapagmatyag kayo. So kailangan makita ninyo na bawat political party ay nandoon ba yung issue ninyo na dinadala nila. Dahil kung doon, tignan nyo din yung kanilang kalidad, no? kung sila ba ay reliable din na samahay, na iboto. So nandito yung change, nandito na yung mag, umbaga, binigyan na tayo ng pagkakataon para ma-change kung ano yung mga napakatagal ng mga... Uh, nangyari sa atin, lalo dito sa Bangsamora people. No? So, kailangan natin through this political party, kailangan na namatsyaga kayo, magtingin kayo, sino yung tamang political party na iboto ninyo sa darating na 20, 2025, insya Allah, not this 2022. Parang sigurado na kayo mapopospone, ha? <laughs> 2025 na yung tinutukoy niya. <laughs> well, mukhang doon naman ang direction, eh, no? Uh, of course, there are those who are actually objecting to that because ang sinasabi nila, the, 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 the MILF in particular should submit itself to the 2022 elections to get a fresh mandate. Ang argument naman ng MILF, well, this was a political, politically negotiated agreement, the product of a peace process. At masyado maikli yung three years. Well, we'll see what will happen in the coming months. Yes. Uh, very crucial yung coming months. At yun nga, ramdam ko yung yung lalim ng reminder especially no, ni Raida no in terms of uh, educating the people dun sa sistema ng politika diyan sa Bangsamoro well maraming maraming salamat sa inyo thank you very much for joining us on this podcast uh, sa uulitin it has been very educational and enlightening i hope especially for our views, viewers and listeners thank you sa inyo thank you thank you our pleasure and that's it for this week's episode of our facts first podcast i'm your host Christian Esguera don't forget to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. You can view this episode on YouTube. It's also available on Apple, Spotify, Google, and Stitcher. Maraming maraming salamat and thank you very much for joining us on this podcast.